a new tool has been released for Solidity developers and it is awesome. So I want to share this with you today. And that is because it is a tool, a testing tool that is very useful if you're developing smart contracts. And it's definitely one tool that should be in your toolbox if you're aiming to become a real Solidity Ethereum developer. So we're going to check it out today, see how it works, see what flaws it has, see what it actually does. And uh, before I do that, I just want to say I hope you had a great Easter. I'm back. I am. Uh, I took some a couple of days off here on Easter, celebrated with my family. But now I'm back. I'm back making videos, and it's going to be a very exciting week. I hope you're ready for more videos. And if you are, make sure to smash the like button, get subscribed, comment, all of that stuff. I want to hear from all of you. And uh, let's get into the topic of today. And today's topic is. Uh, of a uh, tool that's called Securify, I think, from Chain Security. And it is a tool that we can use in order to test and analyze our smart contracts when we have developed smart contracts to see if they contain any design flaws, basically. To see if we have got any of the development patterns that are so important in Solidity right, or if we have missed some of them. For example, we might have uh, missed to, uh, for example, require permission to edit something. We might have missed an important check when it comes to paying out Ether. All of that stuff uh, will this tool detect and then notify us about these potential flaws. And this is great because it is very hard to develop secure contracts. Uh, and the risks are so much higher since we are dealing with money. We're dealing with a program, a code, a piece of code that is owning and distributing potentially money. That makes smart contracts developing interesting, but it also makes it a high risk endeavor since the actual failure could be so much worse. We can actually lose a lot of money if we develop our smart contract wrong. And uh, this is actually the next course coming to the academy. It's smart contract security and you'll learn all about the development patterns that you'll need to uh, to implement and that you need to know how how you can develop smart contracts that will reduce the risk of actually having bugs and getting your contracts hacked but more on, more on that uh, at the end of the video if you're interested but it is the next course coming to the academy but i thought we would take a quick look at this tool so let's get into it so here it is and you can find it if you go to securify.chainsecurity.com and i just want to say that this is in not any way sponsored by chain security i don't know um chain security i know that they have been working a lot with a lot of audits smart contract audits and have been really top of their game when it comes to smart contract security but no sponsor uh in this video i just think it's great when people develop tools that we developers can use to make our lives easier so i want to share it with you because i know there are many developers here so how does it work well here we have a small editor we can put our contract here and then we can and now it's a pre-filled contract so chain security actually just gives us some code here so we can test out their tool and it is a uh, token contract basically with a uh, wallet contract and ownable contract uh, so mo most of you will be familiar with that functionality we'll uh, click scan now and we'll have to agree to some terms we'll scan it and then the tool will tell us will give us a security report so let's see can i make this bigger here we go so it finds a total of 22 issues and we can see for example that we have a, um, a reordering problem so we have a a uh, an error where it uh, it says that the transaction order can affect the amount of ETH that is paid out basically and uh, there is there is a conflict potentially between multiple transactions and that is not good we have um, a uh, recursive call that could lead to re-entrancy attack and that is also something that i've talked about on this channel and we'll talk a lot about in a new course and uh, we have a lot of these errors so this is a contract that was purposefully filled with uh, with errors and uh, that is not uh, of course a uh, a good contract you shouldn't use this uh, this contract for anything else than just uh, testing but so let's take a look at what we information we get here in the contract so let's take a look at the first function here, transfer ownership what is wrong with this function well let's see Method arguments must be sanitized before they're used in computation. So that sounds kind of just like a general error message. It doesn't really give us anything. But when we click on it, we see that it says missing input validation. And uh, it's basically telling us that uh, 
if we don't know what argument is coming into the function, that can lead to weird behavior. And uh, if we look at this, this is a uh, function to transfer the ownership of the contract. Basically, who is the administrator of the contract? Who can execute the uh, functions that are limited to the owner, the creator only? And this has a serious flaw because anyone can transfer ownership. What we uh, actually need to do here is we need to put a modifier on here that says uh, only owner. So that only the owner can actually run this function. Because then we would restrict the actual transferring of ownership, uh, the execution of that change to the actual owner. Without that, anyone could run this function replacing the owner. And that is what it is warning us about. It is warning us that we have no check on the actual input. And this can lead to very, very weird behavior, dangerous behavior, something that should never happen. But and if you're actually using the ownable library uh, that is most commonly used, I think it's from Open Zeppelin, then you wouldn't stumble upon these issues because it's already written in the correct way. But let's add that and see if it actually changes. Let's hit scan again. Now it says something else. Let's see, what does it say? Well, it says the same thing. Well, maybe it just, maybe it doesn't like us to use, uh, to use modifiers. Maybe we should write require uh, owner, oh, let's see here, owner, oh, sorry. Once again, message.sender is equal to owner. Let's take it the same way that they wrote it. There we go. Let's try that if they like that better. No. So obviously this tool seems to have some flaws. And I've noticed another flaw that uh, seems weird because things seem to work quite well, well, except for this, when you use their sort of basic contract here. So I took my own contract. I wrote a very simple contract, a dog contract. And what we basically do is this is like a hello world contract. We have an output and we can set the output in the constructor and uh, then we have uh, a bark function where just the dog makes noise right uh, and it, it will output the string we had here and then we uh, can also change the output right so i've been pressing scan now here and it just analyzes forever it doesn't show up any result uh, while with the standard contract it just showed it instantly so there seems to be some issue because if I reload this page and I try to paste this contract again and scan it, it will just take forever. It doesn't actually analyze, it doesn't actually finish. So maybe the problem is that I actually have a constructor. Let's see if that changes. I just thought of that right now. Uh, let's make that bark. Let's do that. And uh, let's refresh, add that, scan now because it doesn't necessarily know what the uh, maybe what the constructor input should be. I don't know, but it doesn't seem to change things. So there are some flaws in this uh, program for sure. It doesn't really work uh, hundred percent. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Change security will have to come here and tell me what I do wrong. Maybe I screwed up. I don't know. But with that being said, what is the actual benefits of using this tool? And should you actually use it in your development, even though it has some flaws? Well, I hope that this gets better so that we actually can input our own contract and. Uh, it can actually analyze it and give us something. But if it is the fact that they can actually come up with a report, a security report like it did with the first contract, then that is definitely a benefit to you as a developer. Maybe it's just warnings that you can bypass because you have gone through every single one and you have verified that you actually do fix these issues, but the tool is still saying that you don't. That is a normal thing. Warnings and stuff like that is normal as long as you actually have paid attention to those details, then you should be safe. But it's not that you can rely solely upon one tool when analyzing the security of your smart contract. You need to know about the general design, uh, the design principles when designing smart contracts from a security standpoint. And then you can add a tool on top of that to make sure that you haven't missed anything. But it really is just a an addition to your already existing skill set when it comes to security, because as you see, it is not 100% uh, reliable. So 
The new course coming out at the end of this month to the Academy is a smart contract security course on Solidity. So we go through every sort of uh, security mindset that you need to have when developing smart contracts, what, it is, what, it's, what is different from normal programming and how uh, it's different when you're developing smart contracts, what you need to have in mind. We're going to go through some famous hacks. We're going to replicate them. We're going to actually code these hacks and see what went wrong so that you know the best practices and so that you don't repeat the same mistakes that happened in the past on Ethereum where people, for example, the DAO hack lost millions and millions of dollars. We're going to teach you everything so that you know how to design and build smart contracts that are safe and that follow the industry standard when it comes to security. So if you're interested in that, you need to join the Academy. Of course, the course drops at the end of this month of, of this month. So make sure to click below to join the Academy. With that being said, Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, the dislike button if you didn't, and always get subscribed to the channel, hit the bell button so that you don't miss the next video coming tomorrow. You can also leave a comment if you have any questions, any thoughts, general comments about the video, about the channel below. I read every single one, I answer most of them. So make sure to, uh, to do that and then I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.